Hello everyone and welcome to one more tutorial or a lecture on Salmonella Place and today I want to talk about a DNA amplification technique and it's called PCR. You have probably heard about this technique, it's quite popular especially in molecular and cellular biology world and it's an abbreviation for polymerase chain reaction. This is a DNA amplification technique, meaning that you're using this technique to produce copies of short DNA segments. Say if you, in a lab setting, in an in vitro setting, you cannot uh, work with a single DNA segment. So you have to amplify, make tons of copies, that way you can work with and you can identify it in a proper way. Uh, again, I'm writing it down that it's a in vitro, meaning that it's, it's done in a test tube setting and not in a living cell. Very important. In this technique, we use a DNA template, which is going to be that specific segment to make copies out of. And what I'm going to draw here is say if we have a DNA molecule and we want to study a particular segment, say this segment here, and we're going to produce copies, amplify that particular segment and this is what we do in PCR, in polymerase chain reaction and I'm going to show you how we do this, the specific steps of this procedure. So this is how we produce these copies. Another thing that I would like to say is that because of that this we're going to have an exponential amplification, meaning that we're going to have exponential number of copies created with this technique. So in order to do uh, to run a PCR you need to prepare a mixture of elements in order to do so. So you have to have the template, the primers, the DNTPs, and attack polymerase. We're going to discuss these in more detail. After you have this mixture prepared, you're going to throw it into a machine that is programmed to do to run the, se the several cycles of PCR, and this machine is called thermocycler, like I have here. And these are just a brief description of the PCR steps that we're going to go through. So the first element that we need to understand that is the DNA template. This is the first element of the DNA synthesizing mixture that we're going to include before we run a PCR. And this is the DNA molecule which will be amplified. So the DNA molecule or the segment that you want to make copies out of. And I'm drawing here a small example, just a small segment of DNA, just to tell you that this DNA template will determine the sequences of nucleotides. So the copies that are going to be produced are going to have the same sequences of nucleotides that you see here, for example. So the second element that we have on the list of DNA synthesizing mixtures is uh, or are the primers. You need primers in order to start the DNA synthesis when you're running a polymerase chain reaction. So let's say that these molecules are igniters. They're starting the reaction. Now what I'm drawing here, I'm drawing in uh, the orange structure is representing my DNA template and these yellow smaller structure are going to be my primers. So you can have an idea what they exactly do uh, in, the, in the PCR, in the polymerase chain reaction. So the two primers must be present, like I said, to initiate the DNA synthesis in opposite directions from the complementary strands of the DNA template. And that's what I have right here. Another thing that I would like to mention is that a primer is a short nucleic acid that binds to the DNA template by complementary base pairing. So it is a nucleic acid and for that reason I'm drawing here a nucleotide. So you can have an idea and so I can explain that these primers have on the pr three prime position an OH group that will serve 
well, let me draw the base here so it can be a complete nucleotide. So these uh, primers have this OH group that will act as a target for the DNA polymerase and therefore initiating the DNA synthesis. So the third on the list of elements necessary to introduce or to throw in the mixture for a PCR, a polymerase chain reaction, are the DNTPs. And these are the free nucleotides used as building blocks during the DNA synthesis. So if we're going to produce many copies, we need lots of nucleotides present, free nucleotides, let's say, so we can use them as building blocks. And these are, of course, DATPs, DCTPs, DGTPs, and DTTPs. I do suggest if you have any problem, any question on the nomenclature, you check out the nucleic acid lecture here on Salmonella, and you're going to understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. The D, though, stands for deoxyribose. Fourth on the list of the important elements to throw into a DNA synthesizing mixture for polymerase chain reaction is a TAC polymerase. And a TAC polymerase is nothing but a DNA polymerase. But a very special type of DNA polymerase that was found in a species of bacteria called Thermus aquaticus and this is heat resistant and it's important to be heat resistant because PCR polymerase chain reaction is a DNA amplification technique that requires the use of high temperatures therefore if you use um, a non heat resistant let's say um, or an enzyme that is not heat resistant then as you know it will denature and therefore not function properly so you have to use an enzyme that is heat resistant and that's why you use TAC polymerase in PCR now what I have here is a pre a conceived let's say drawing so I can tell you what the explain these points that I just wrote here. Now the first thing that you see here in this image is a DNA template, this orange structure here, and this blue structure here is a primer which is an element that is needed in order for the TAC polymerase to start its function, synthesizing the DNA in PCR. Now what do you have here too? I have two nucleotides I will call nucleotide 1 and nucleotide 2 and let's keep in mind that this pink here is supposed to be part this pink nucleotide or nucleotide 1 is supposed to be part of the primer and nucleotide 2 is just a D, DNTP or a free nucleotide that is going to be used as part of the DNA synthesis. Now, what I want to explain is that in nucleotide 2, and this is a part that you probably have heard on the nucleic acid lecture, where I explain that a nucleotide can have a maximum of three phosphate groups. And they are called alpha, beta, and gamma phosphate groups. And the DNA polymerase cuts the bond between the alpha and beta phosphate groups. So the TAC polymerase will come and break this bond right here. And then what will happen is with the energy acquired, and acquired has a C, so I need to add a C here. So with the energy acquired from cutting the bonds is then used to produce a new bond. This is chemistry, if you remember well. So this energy will then be used to produce a bond between the phosphoric acid and the 3 prime position OH. So this bond right here that's going to happen between this group here. And this is the 3 prime carbon, if you remember well, nucleic acid uh, lecture where you have a 3 prime 
bond or a, a three prime carbon, sorry, in this position right here or in the three prime position. If you want details on how this bond here is going to be formed, I suggest you have a look at the nucleic acid lecture here on Salmonella Place. Now, another thing that I would like to mention here on the TAC polymerase is that TAC cannot start synthesis on a naked template. It needs this very important element here, the primer, in order to start its function. Now, moving on to the steps of polymerase chain reaction, and what I want to do here is just give you an overview of the three main steps to, of this DNA amplification technique. The first one is denaturation by heating, the second one primer binding, and the third and last one DNA synthesis. What happens is that these three steps are repeated several times in, into what we call cycles, and that way you're going to be a, able to amplify your DNA segment into exponential amounts. What I have here in this illustration is, are the steps of PCR, but I'm going to take you over um, and explain with my own drawings and into a little bit more detail on the next slides. It's time to go over the first step of PCR, which is denaturation. And say if you have a double-stranded DNA molecule, I'm drawing it here with the 3 prime, 5 prime, 5 prime, 3 prime, anti-parallel orientation, if you remember this well. What we're going to do is these two uh, strands are going to be separated with heat. So heat is going to be applied and these two strands are going to separate and the DNA molecule is going to be then denatured. And the temperature that we do so, this part is done with 95 degrees Celsius. And this is when you have the two separated strands of the DNA molecule. So the second step of PCR is primer binding. This is the part where we're going to have the primers binding to the DNA templates. So we have here the denatured DNA from the previous step and now what's going to happen is that the temperature is going to be lowered in the thermocycler, which is a fantastic machine that is able to change the temperatures according to the cycles. So it's going to lower to 55 degrees Celsius, and in this way, the primers are going to be in these conditions, the primers are going to be able to bind to the DNA templates. And these are the structures that I have here, the yellow structures binding to the DNA template. And there are many copies of primers present, so the primers will prevent renaturation, it will prevent the two single-strand DNA molecules to bind to one another again and renature. So the third and last step of PCR is DNA synthesis. And I have here my DNA templates, the two single strands, with their primers. What's going to happen now, we're going to have the TAC polymerase in action here. And the polymerase will continue the complementary base pairing. And this is what you're going to see now, what I'm going to draw. Choosing the right color here, a different color. And this is now a continuation. This is how the DNA synthesis or adding of nucleotides in these templates. And as you know, the two DNA double strands will be identical because you are copying now. So you have two uh, out of uh, the first one. We started with one DNA template and now we have two. So we made another copy at this stage. And the temperature of this uh, step is done at 72 degrees Celsius. 
Now, this step is done with two important components, the tag polymerase, like I mentioned, and of course you need the building blocks, the nucleotides, the DNTPs, in order to do the DNA synthesis. Now, another thing that is important to mention is that the synthesis will continue as long as the template is present or as long as DNA synthesis is not stopped for any reason. So after you're done with the last step, so in the first cycle, the last step is uh, the DNA synthesis, you move on to a new cycle, and this is the second cycle. And after the second cycle, you move on to a third one, and so on and so forth. So, and on each cycle, you have the same three steps, like we have here. The first one, denaturation of the templates or the double-stranded DNA molecules. And then you have primer binding, where the primers are going to bind to the single-stranded DNA molecules. And then finally, you're going to have DNA synthesis with TAC polymerase and the DNTPs. And then the DNA here in the DNA synthesis is going to be synthesized between the two primers, the old primer and the new primer which stops the template. And again, I'm just reminding you the temperatures, 95 degrees Celsius, 55, and 72 degrees Celsius on, different, on the different steps. So these, after the first cycle, moving on to the second cycle, and many more other cycles, in a total, usually 20 cycles, this will produce approximately one million fold of the original content. So lots of copies that you can use to manipulate in a lab setting. And the procedure can be done in a few hours in the thermocycle. cycle.